Okay then, it's top five time again. And this week I've actually got quite a mixed bag for you. There's been a few different styles of build that's uh, managed to get in. So there should be something for everybody. Obviously again this week a judging panel has chose these camps. I'll uh, put their names up at the end. So yeah, without further ado, let's just uh, take a look at these camps. In the number five spot we have the Flailing Fox with, um, what's it called this bugger? The Modern Garden Home. First off, exterior wise, beautiful. If you're into your clean kind of stuff, this one is right up your street. Obviously, the uh, main talking point about this build is the garden. It's been beautifully put together. I like all the little tricks you put in here, Fox, like sinking the wavy willards rocks into the foundations to um, act as stepping stones. It's a neat little trick. Yeah, overall, I, I just like the aesthetics of this place. Very green, very clean, and I'm a rhyming machine. Let's cast our eyes on the main house, which again, beautifully put together. Um, seen a few little building tricks, you know, the typical overhanging roofs and whatnot. I've got to say that the uh, wallpaper actually looks quite good here i think i mentioned this in a previous top five that wallpaper never really tends to work it's a bit well it's a bit shit to put it bluntly but now nah, here it seems to work very well overall fox your exterior very nicely done no complaints from me good work so let's have a ganders on the interior i'm expecting good things from this fox is a fantastic builder and this does not disappoint what a beautifully decorated house 10 out of 10 from me already. I love the custom furniture that you've made. Obviously, the merge glitches um, are a personal favourite of mine as well. To sum it up, dude, you've done an awesome job with the inside of it. It's not too mad. It is quite clean as well, obviously, with it being a modern build. But I think it's, uh, it's turned out great. Yeah, thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on the number five spot. Camp number four, we have the Akiras with the Enclave Rhineland Testing Lab. Now, this was actually tied with number three spot. The way that we split them, rather than, you know, doing a whole other judging vote thing, is quite simply by the amount of votes made for the build, if that makes any sense. So this had, let's say, four votes, but the number three spot had six votes. Do you get what I'm saying? Of course you do. But anyway, yeah, just thought I'd put that out there. Not that any of you give a shit, but there you go. Uh, yes, now I've actually seen this camp in game and it's absolutely awesome. It literally does exactly what it says on the tin. Even on the outside of it, you can tell it's some form of a research facility or a military kind of installation. It, it's got that kind of vibe about it. Believe me when I say, right, that is not an easy one to pull off. In Fallout 76, military style camps or anything to do with enclave or brotherhood or whatnot they are quite simply a pain in the ass to put together and it's because we don't have enough decor for them it literally comes down to that so yeah akira's i can appreciate uh the effort that's gone into this massive respect for pulling this one off it's uh it's turned out really well the key part of this build in my opinion though is the inside of it let's have a look um yeah this is um one of the more disturbing camps i've been in if you stand there and look at all the blinkies in the jars yes they all do blink at the same time and it's um it's very off-putting to say the least but yeah it does look like a research facility done it again the akiras have knocked out the park with um with the decor on this place i more than worthy in the number four spot thank you very much for entering this week so it wouldn't be fashion at week without a fashion at theme camp would it and reasonable madness has not let us down in the number three spot we have this cozy helvetia home Told you there was something for everyone this time round, didn't I? What did it for me with this camp? And yes, full clarity, I did vote for this one. Is just how realistic it looks. There's nothing over the top. It's not overdone. It is quite simply a home. And I like that. There's not enough camps like this in the wasteland. Now then, not only is the house itself very nice, the garden that Madness has put together looks spot on. I've got no complaints about it. Now, I'm not a massive fan of those uh, White Springs looking flowers. Just ask her Silver Bunny about that, in my opinion, when she uses them. However, in this build, it's got to be said, I do think they fit in really well. Yeah, overall, exterior-wise, the house, the garden, simple, but very effective. I love it, Madness. Well done. On the interior side of things, it's what we've come to expect from Madness. Beautifully well put together, very high levels of detail. A lot of time has been spent on this, as you can quite clearly see from this uh, video. I would just like to point out, though, again, the reason why I like the interior so much is for the same reason as the outside. It's realistic. It just looks like a standard home. It's very underrated, and in my opinion, building something that is realistic in Fallout is a lot harder than building um, 
something that's not realistic. I'm sorry I couldn't find a, um, another word to put in there. But yeah, it's just literally down to the decor that we have available to us. So again, Madness, kudos to you for making it look so... Making it look so real. Yeah, I, I think that's the best choice of words. Right, now I don't usually do this, but I've just had a look at Madness's channel and she is at 914 subscribers. Do you awesome people think that we could get her up to that magic 1k? You know, the first big milestone. I'm going to leave a link down to her channel in the description, as well as links to all the other builders featured in this video. Let me see what the community can do. I, I know you've got this one. I I'm pretty confident. Madness, thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on the number three spot. In the number two spot this week, we actually have one of our judging panel. Don't worry, she's been removed from the chat. She doesn't know this is going on. She's not been able to vote for herself. It is Lady H with the Mothman dollhouse build. Now, guys, I'll be straight with you, right? I have seen a million and one dollhouses in this game. At one point, every Tom, Dick and Harry had one. What I'm trying to say is it takes a lot to impress me um, when it comes down to these style of builds. Lady H has managed to do that purely and simply because... She's done it a little bit different. It's not your typical, hey Barbie, hey Ken kind of friggin' My Little Pony dream house kind of thing. Nah, she's actually gone with a horror themed dollhouse, which I'm all for. I, I really am. This is, um, it's unique and that's what I like about it. The structure that Lady H has put together is very well done. I like how it's got the double doors on the front of it. But what really made this for me, and I think this counts for all dollhouse builds that you see, the decor is on point. And with a build like this, it kind of has to be. Um, it is very well detailed. Every room's got something a little bit different about it, but it all keeps in with the overall Mothman creepy kind of theme. But above all else, each and every single one of these rooms has had a decent amount of time spent on it. It's not like she's done the kitchen really well and spent hours doing that, gone to the bedroom and thought, yeah, sod this, I I'm going to pub. The level of detail and the consistency in the decoration goes throughout this build so kudos to you for that lady h you must have a, a lot of patience to um put something like this together extremely unique looking take on a dollhouse very well executed lady h congratulations on the number two spot and thank you very much for entering Okay then, so now we come to the number one spot for this week. However, as always, we do have two more camps to look at after I've shown you this one, and they are both going to be honourable mentions, but trust me, you're going to want to see them because they are extremely well done. Anyway, this week's winner of the top five camp competition is Kif D with the Mentats store build, and yeah, this is right up my alley, guys. It's junky, it's scrappy, and it's bloody well law friendly. Um, I love these kind of builds, as you all probably know by now. Don't really have to tell you that, do I? So there is actually a certain level of complexity that's gone into this. Uh, take, for example, the little ramp that Kif D's built at the front there. To do that, it would have had to go underneath the map. And I am actually intrigued to see how much you've got going on under there, to be honest, Kif. It's not exactly a groundbreaking trick by any stretch of the imagination, but it shows a level of dedication. Um, he could have just left that ramp off there, but no, he's actually took the time to go underneath, do the extra work, and uh, yeah, put it in place. Another thing I really liked about this was the extra work that you put into the roof as well. Take a look at that, guys. There's uh, several different layers going on there. Again, another really simple trick but it shows the dedication to the build. That would have taken a long time messing around with a flamethrower trap, let me tell you. Kiff, exterior-wise, you have nailed it. Let's take a look on the interior. I'm expecting big things. It's a small build, and yeah, um, I'm not disappointed. Wow, fantastic decor. This place is done up to the nines, and again, much like Madness's build, very highly detailed. Fantastic use of the chess boards, I must say, as well. Okay, if I'm going to share a uh, little secret with you here now, this was by far and away the most voted number one camp this week, and quite rightly so. The exterior, the amount of time you put into the interior, ju just everything about it, really well executed. Thank you very much for entering this week, Kiff, and congratulations on the number one spot. And guys, uh, d did I mention... Kiff's not even on 100 subs yet. So, like I say, go down into that description box and um, show the guy some love because this kind of stuff deserves more views. But anyway, yes, that wraps up this week's top five camps. Let's take a ganders at the honourable mentions. Who should we go with first? Okay, let's take a look at Silver Bunny's High Wire Rest Camp. Main thing about this is a fantastic use of a pre-existing location. And apparently it's a really difficult one to build in as well. When Nux Blackthumb's telling you that uh, he struggled to build here, uh, yeah, you know that you're in for a challenge. 
So this is a camp that relies very heavily on the decor. Most of this is pre-existing. There's not too much you can do with it. But Bunny has more than risen to the challenge. I mean, just check it out, guys. The, the level of detail in the decoration of this place, next level. It's a properly well-executed camp, and like I say, a fantastic use of a pre-existing spot as well. Silver Bunny, thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on honourable mention. Now, our second honourable mention, this is Nig Wad's camp. I, I think that's how you say it, and I hope I've, um, I hope I've uh, got that right. But yes, this is the bus station camp. This was one of my favourites this week. I love what you've done with the place. It's just a really nice looking camp. Uh, it's clean, but still somehow manages to fit in with Wasteland. I love the shape and look at structure. It actually reminds me of uh, like countryside cottages and um, other kind of old buildings that you find knocking around England, especially at Lake District. Ah, uh, it's a proper bunny camp, this one. It's well filmed too. The interior is also top notch. You've gone for a bus station. It looks like one. And overall, yeah, it's a solid 10 out of 10 from me on this one, mate. Thank you very much for entering. Congratulations on the honourable mention. And that wraps it up, guys. Up on your screen now is all the judges that took part this week. Not every single one of them will judge on a said week, and it does rotate a little bit. So, yeah, this is why the names are different than, than last time round. Make sure you show them some love, guys. Their links are down in the description, too. It's not an easy thing to um, to do this. It's, it's quite stressful um, for the most part. But, yeah, massive thank you to all my channel members and Patreons. The extra support is much appreciated. Appreciated. If that's anything you guys are interested in, again, there's a link in the description. As we say, North, I will love you and leave you, and I'll catch you at next one. Have fun, everybody.